Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. How's it going everyone, welcome back to the source code, and welcome back to the Java 8 tutorial series. And in this video we are going to be looking at primitive data types, and with primitive data types they include things such as integers, booleans, floating points, and characters. Now what does that all mean? I'm gonna explain that all in this video. So when first looking at, let's just look at integers first. An integer is basically a whole number, right? So think of it as like one or negative one. That's a whole number, right? There's no decimal places. And in Java, there is four different ways you can define an integer. So you can define a byte, which can only hold, and now remember, each one of these numbers or these data types can only hold a certain value, right? So for a byte, it can only hold up to negative 128 and positive 127. So if we want to define a byte, we can just go ahead and say byte, and we will say, and we have to give it a name. All variables have to be given a name, right? So we're just gonna define this as lives. And then this is gonna equal 127. As you can see there, that works. But if we change this to 128, it's no longer a byte, right? It's telling us that what it found was actually an int or a short, because this could technically be a short as well. But what it's telling us, it's, it's not a byte, right? This is no longer a byte because it falls out of the range of a byte. So if we change this to 127, it works. And now if we just go ahead and do a simple system.out.print and we put in you have, you have, and then if we go ahead and say plus lives plus lives remaining. So in this here, basically what we're saying is we have a string plus we have a number plus we have another string. Because with strings, I couldn't just go ahead and say lives in here and have it represent this because now this is inside of this string here and it's not detecting it as a variable but as just another piece of text in a string. And if we go ahead and run this now, you can see there I have 127 lives, I did that last video too, lives remaining. But now if we want to go ahead and change this to a short, 127 falls within that range. But again, with a short, you're limited to the amount of value you can have, right? So for a short, we can only have a negative 32,768 up to positive 32,767. So if we change this to 32,768, you can see that it's not working. It's telling us that we have an int, we don't have a short. But if we change this to seven, you can see there that it is now working. And if we run this, we have 30,767 lives left. But now if we go ahead and look at an int, an int is a very large number, like you have up to like 2 billion something. I don't know the exact for that one, but it's like 2 billion, like 100 something. I can't remember the, like again, I can't remember the exact, but just know it's very, very large. And again, now we can change this to say 1 million, right? That's 1 million, yeah, 1 million and it doesn't give us any errors because an int can go that high. But let's say we want it to be this. You can see that the energy number is too large because we have, let's just throw some commas in here. Now you can't put commas in here. It won't recognize commas, right? So we have like a hundred billion, right? A hundred billion, far out of the range of an integer, right? Now with a long, you can go up to like nine, trillion something I don't even know exactly how far you can go so the next thing we're going to be looking at is floating point numbers so floating point numbers are is a data type to represent numbers that have decimals or a fractional section of it right so something like so let's just look at float here first or let's look at double here first and we'll say double lives and let's just change this 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 to health remaining and we'll change this to health because I don't think you can have a half a life left you could maybe I don't know and we're gonna say okay so double health and we have 99.5 health left because a double is a decimal and now if we run this 
we can see here on the side we have 99.5 health remaining. But if we want to change this to a float, and now keep in mind, a double is going to be more precise than a float. So if you need exact, use a double because a float is floating. It's going to change a little bit the further down the line you go. But if we change this to a float, you can see that we just can't just define it as a float and it doesn't work, right? It's going to give us an error down here, although it's a little bit further than what you guys can see there. Uh, it's going to give us an error because it's not finding a flow, it's finding a double. And the reason for this is because you have to instance a float over it, right? So we can say float like this, or we can go ahead and do it shorthand and just go ahead and add an F, oh, and just add an F at the back end of it. And now we can change this to be whatever number we want. We have 99.55555 health remaining. And as you can see there, it actually changed it to 5556. Five, five, uh, so it's not even what we wrote. It rounded it up to the nearest tenth. So just keep that in mind. And now the next thing we're going to be looking at is characters. Now with characters, you can use a char. Um, and we will just go, we'll change this. So we can use a char, right? But we're not going to use a char because you're probably never going to really use a char. Um, I'll put a link down below to where you can look at all the primitive data types, but let's just go ahead and skip right over to a string. Now, a string is what we've already sort of been working with, right? And we'll just say string health. Uh, we'll say string name equals, and now we need to put our string inside of the double quotations for it to be represented as a string. And then we're just going to change our system out to say hello plus name. So if I put Deshaun in there and I run this, it's just going to say, hello, Deshaun. So a string is just anything inside of these double quotes. And now again, I could put numbers in here. And then if I go ahead and do this, it's going to say, hello, Deshaun, 90, 90, 90. Oops, run. Hello, Deshaun, 90, 90, 90. What's cool about strings is you can sort of build strings, right? So I don't have to have everything inside of this one string here. I could go ahead and grab, uh, I can just go ahead and make an int and we'll say 21, oops, int age equals 21. And I can go ahead and say, hello, comma, Deshaun is, and now I can say age plus years old. And if I run this, it's sort of like what we did in the system out and now you can see it there, Deshaun is 20 years old. And I don't know why I put that and not that, but it still works all the same. So that's what I think is really cool. Oh, we just need to put a space there, so that way we get a space there as well. Uh, so strings are pretty cool. You can add any variable you want inside of a string as long as you put the plus and you separate it from the others. Now, the next thing is our Booleans. And now we don't have much to show with this because um, it's pretty hard to show a boolean for the most part, but a boolean is just true or false, right? So if we go ahead and say boolean is old, and we can say false, we can go ahead and say hello, and let's just go ahead and grab string, oh, string name equals Deshaun. So we can say hello plus name is and then we can just go ahead and say is old. So it's not gonna make much sense here, but you can just sort of, go to sort of see what it does. So we can say, hello, Deshaun is false. So obviously, again, it doesn't make much sense, but as you can see there, it is representing false. But now if we go ahead and say true, when we run this, you can see there, hello, Deshaun is true. And now with a Boolean, you can't go ahead and say a string in true. It has to just be written out as true or false. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys learned something about data types and primitive data types. I will be making another video in the future about non-primitive data types. Um, but for right now, I think just knowing about data types is the, the best way to start. So once again, be sure to leave a comment, drop a like, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.